exactly. I, I appreciate people who know how to do that, who can break down a beer's flavors and ingredients and tell you what kind of hops come out just when they sip it. I love those guys. Yeah, that's not my thing. So I write dick joke stories. I write stories with weird characters, um, stories about, you know, ex-girlfriends and wizards and ninjas. Welcome to Tap That AZ, the podcast that brings you the great stories about the exploding Arizona craft beer scene, directly from the people who are making it happen. I'm your host, Eric Walters. Welcome back to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to sit down with uh, the Classy Alcoholic. If you guys haven't read his stuff, make sure you go find that. I'll put the uh, his blog link in the show notes, so make sure you check that out. Uh, this guy is a really good writer, writes some pretty great stories uh, behind his beer adventures and uh, just his adventures in general. So um, we'll give you a heads up though. Uh, this is probably the n- most not suitable for work episode I've ever had. <laughs> uh, the classy alcoholic gets a little bit uh, a little bit rowdy at times. Um, so um, where there was even a part towards the beginning where someone at the bar actually turned around and uh, was like, what the hell are you guys doing? What are you talking about? And uh, it's pretty funny. But heads up, it's going to get a little little crazy at times. But um, good guy, uh, really interesting guy, really funny guy, really cares about the Arizona craft beer scene. So um, you can definitely hear his passion um, in, this, in this conversation. But uh, first, um, I threw out um, an offer for you know 10 people who would help me um, kind of improve the show I was gonna send out wanted to send out a survey send out some free stickers to people and um, thank you for the 10 people who responded you guys know who you are and um, I was gonna share your names but I'm not sure if uh, if you guys are comfortable with me um, sharing your information <laughs> your first and last name I'm sure you'd be okay with it but uh, but yeah something else pretty exciting uh, if you guys go check out um, we're up on Facebook right now I'm pretty active I'm still working on getting Instagram up and rolling, but Arizona Food and Beer. I'm working with a, a guy named Eric Murkow, who is the founder of Arizona Food and Wine, and um, we're wanting to start a uh, craft beer um, extension of that. So, um, really awesome stuff. Really excited about it. Um, check it out. Go to Facebook and um, like the page, Arizona Food and Beer. Also coming up this weekend, uh, September 9th, up in Flagstaff at the uh, Pepsi Amphitheater is the first um, Northern Arizona Jam Beer Re, a celebration of music and craft beer uh, put on by the Arizona Craft Brewers Guild. Uh, There's going to be a lot of breweries up there. They're going to have live music. Um, It's going to be a good time. And it's in Flagstaff. I mean, honestly, like... Does it get better than that? Uh, Flagstaff in um, September. So make sure you guys get your tickets to that. Um, just go online and Google search it, right? I mean, pretty simple. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, so get tickets. All right, let's jump into the episode and let's uh, let's talk with the classy alcoholic. So we're here at Mesquite River. Brewing Company, right? Mesquite River Brewing. It's not even Brewing Company. They they're are buck- all brewing companies. They're, bunk- they're bucking the systems at this point. <laughs> so I think uh, legally they have to put in co. Yeah, right. Because otherwise there's just a dude brewing, <laughs> right. and then he'd go to jail for yeah. selling the beer. Right, yeah. Some dude in the parking lot with like a van. Hey, you guys, you want some beer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I would do it if I were a brewer. Me too. Just like... I'd buy it. Out of my trunk. (laughs) Yeah. So I am with the Classy Alcoholic. This is a big day for me. So I met, so I I used to work at um, Buffalo Wild Wings in Goodyear, right? And I met Jimmy Johnson, the NASCAR driver. Like just on a random night, him and Nick Lachey came out and I played basketball with Jimmy Johnson. Super awesome. Not a NASCAR fan, but he's a cool dude. This is a bigger day than that. (laughs) I I will say I'm Bigger days when you went Nick Lachey because you know what ninety eight degrees that was my jam. Remember the nineties people? I I have a a, a system for my nineties uh, breakup playlist. A system? So, a system. Yeah. So it starts breakup playlist. Start with some Coldplay. Okay. You know, pretty standard. Right. Dip into some like I don't know Backstreet Boys ninety degrees. Then it takes a hard right turn at Savage Garden if you remember the. <laughs> I'm I'm a wallower. I'll I'll. Yeah. 
I'll Savage Garden up some breakup playlists. Savage Garden. Dude, I never, in a million years, like if someone said, what is one topic that will come out? Savage Garden was the last thing. I love it, though. You're man. welcome. Yeah. How old are you? I am 31. 31. Okay. 31 and that's impressive, old. too, because I'm 38, and Savage Garden was like my era. That was my, the soundtrack to my middle school years, I would say, <laughs> is, is Savage Garden. Yeah. Nice, man. Classy. Thanks for joining me, man. Well, thank you for having me. This yeah. is great. I've been reading your stuff for a long time. I love it. Um, I, I followed the, you did like a saga on, um, what was it, 8-Bit, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. 8-Bit yeah. Ale Works uh, out west in uh, Avondale. Yep. Uh, you know, it's a brewery that's based uh, around video games, um, comic books, a lot of nerd shit. Mm-hmm. Went out there. <laughs> great beer. Great owners. Uh, I'm not the kind of uh, blogger that, I don't know, writes... Oh, you can really get the mosaic hops that comes out in the malt <laughs> backbone. Like, that's just a bunch of guys sucking their own dicks. And sh- <laughs> Actually, for, <laughs> maybe I should have said, like, this This podcast will be NSFW. Yeah, we, uh, so I want to make it very clear. You're going to get the E. You're going to get the E on iTunes for both explicit and educational. That's right. So Two minutes, 35 seconds into it. If you haven't realized at this point. Right. Yeah, so, you might. You, you, might. Might. you know, one thing I'll say just for, for uh, the listener who's about to turn this off. Look, I write about beer. Uh, wine I drink you have to be 21 and up to drink you have to be 21 and up to read my shit you have to be 21 and up to hang out with me like I'm yeah. what am I going to talk about with a 19 year old no yeah. right yeah I mean, the, snapchat the, you snapchatting yeah I mean I'll, I'll, I've snapchatted pictures of my junk it's, well, <laughs> well okay once once <laughs> to okay, me so the and that was yeah. weird that was so weird I, I really stopped after um, <laughs> the smartphones because dude this, these screens are huge yeah, the, the last time I yeah. sent a dick pic to a chick it was on a Blackberry that screen was tiny it looked good it looked great this thing you can you can zoom in on an iPhone oh it's terrible I mean at the very least I can put a filter on it and it looks cool mm-hmm. so oh yeah you're doing like the zoom thing like where everything's blurry on yeah, the outside yeah, and she's yeah, like yeah. look at this yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and she was so, like no last time was a Blackberry and it turned out alright but that was that was many a year ago eight years ago or something but right. yeah so the thing the thing about the, the beer the craft beer scene in Arizona um and I love it. These aren't, for the people who don't know, breweries aren't like skeevy dive bars, you know. No. They're, they're not badly lit. You know, these are bright lit places. They're welcoming. So, some of them are very family friendly. Oh, absolutely. Which on, I like in the sense because you're talking about a, a family business. A lot of breweries, they're family businesses. You mm-hmm. got a husband and wife owners. They got their kids hanging around. Their friends' kids come around. And that's cool, but I hate children, and I just I hate. <laughs> you seem their, like a children hater. I just hate their <laughs> stupid little faces and their dead eyes that don't know how to show empathy. So, but true, right? There's a lot of people out there that are like, "Look how cute my kids are." Like your kids aren't cute; they're annoying. They're just get them the hell out of here. My kids, I got kids. They're cute, right? So, we'll draw the line there. But everybody else's kids suck. Oh sure, yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> and the problem is they come up and talk to me while uh, while I'm drinking. Yeah. And. I'm not rude. I'll I'll have a conversation and I'll be yeah. like, kid, I just boned this grossest, trashiest chick last night. You have no idea. How old are you? <laughs> right. You're nine? Right. Oh my god. So trashy. Right. I was drunk. It was dark. It was, she was sweaty and sticky like a beached whale. I love it. <laughs> and let me the, let me define boned real quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got <laughs> uh, We literally have customers that just turn around. Yes. And uh, <laughs> asked us to tone it down here. Right. We're doing the podcast. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I am disgusting. Sorry about that. So you uh, started your blog in 2014? I did, right? yes. Yes. Why? Why did you do that? Well, I was working a job that well, wasn't really... I liked the job. I didn't like the place where I was working. And that's something... Well, we won't talk about it. It's, it's separate uh, yeah, yeah. From, from, from the blog. Uh, okay. I think that career is totally separate. But I will say that I needed something for myself. Mm. I needed something that um, I needed a passion. Okay. Right. I like to drink. Yeah. I like to write. I wasn't really traveling around Arizona that much uh, up, at, up to that point. Okay. And I figured, well, let's discover some new places. I didn't even know where to start. So right. I thought, okay. Let's find some breweries. Yeah, yeah. And I looked, mapped out some breweries, and I just dove right in. I tried, like I said, to figure out what my style was, the reviews, the but eh, I'm I'm too lazy to learn 
how beer is made and what goes into beer. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot, right? It's like a science, and you got to be you got to be into it. Too right? much. Yeah. Too much, I think. yeah. I, Drinking it is way more enjoyable. Way less. Exactly. I, I appreciate people who know how to do that. Yeah. Who can break down a beer's flavors and ingredients and tell you what kind of hops come out just when they sip it. Yeah. Yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. That's not my thing. Right. <laughs> so. I write dick joke stories. Right. I write <laughs> stories with weird characters. Um, stories about, you know, ex-girlfriends and wizards and ninjas. Yeah. So I decided to do that. And but you did I, this before you even got into beer. Yeah. I, yeah. I was writing in high school and early college a lot. Okay. Got away from it for a few years and decided I needed to get back into it. Right. And... My thing, I, I think what resonates with people uh, who read my stuff is that Yes, there's stories about talking animals, dick jokes, blah, blah, blah. Right. But it's also stories about uh, heartache and love loss. Uh, yeah. Stories about uh, an outsider who tries to find his place in the world and doesn't really know where he fits in. Yeah. Stories about the conflict that arises when people believe in you, look up to you, trust you, but you don't really believe in yourself. Mm, interesting. Stories okay. about standing up for your friends in need when right. no one else will. Yeah. Stories about what it means to be a hero. And I think that, alongside with the jokes about dicks and butts, which I do many of, yeah, uh, I think that that sincerity uh, comes out and resonates with people. And it's and it's been a pretty good ride so far. I've been writing for about two and a half years. I've had a lot of people who come up to me at beer fests, uh, just at breweries who recognize me, and it's it's pretty great. Yeah, and that's pretty awesome too, man. Because it's it's uh, it's not just. Sometimes those the the beer reviews and, and you, you got to respect those guys for putting themselves out there. I guess up to a certain level, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're you're adding a like a, a story element to it. That's what I like, right? And there's depth to it, right? There's depth to it. And if you can if you can get beneath, like perfect example is when we first started. This chick was so pissed at Classy for. <laughs> It's so, but it was like she does not realize how much she played into exactly what we want to do, right? Because exactly. that's not what it's about. Like it's about like if you can get past that, and that's a little bit of a humor to kind of dig into that. But, dude, I've read your writings, and you have a talent, man. Thank you. You do I, have a talent. Think about me personally, even I'm intentionally abrasive up front, just so well first to push people away because I don't trust anybody. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of people. Yeah, yeah. Know? So first is just like. Oh no, thank you. I don't want friendship or mm-hmm. like companionship or or, or or a reason to to enjoy being around people. No, thank right. you, thank you. <laughs> but then, I'm myself, which is also the other guy who you know tries tries to tries to be a little smarter than the average dick and joke blog, yeah, dick and joke yeah. story guy. Right. Uh, and I think that that uh, sort of fosters stronger connections afterwards. So right. Um, it is, it is a bit of having people jump through a hurdle. Uh, I, like I said, there's probably like two people still listening <laughs> to this podcast. <laughs> I mean, you're, 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 least, me you. you're least downloaded. Yeah, two people, you and me. <laughs> maybe, maybe my mom. Eh, she doesn't really. She probably won't understand. She <laughs> it's not, it, if we can do the whole podcast in Spanish, maybe my mom will listen. Okay, but all right. Probably yeah. not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I. the goal was always to promote local businesses, to promote, uh, you know, I'm friends with brewery owners. They're yeah folks i hang out with you know, they love you dude i've like that brewery like they they reposted one of your reviews they like, that. look at this like this is awesome that's how it should be man because if you can and I, in my opinion that's kind of what the craft community is about is like it's like look past like okay yeah maybe you don't like our hefeweizen try the pale out try the stout it's like it's about the people it's about you know it's more than just you know classy's dick jokes and <laughs> right no i've i've been to many places and i won't name names but places that serve let's say okay beer yeah uh but it's a cool spot very chill place to hang out people i like behind the bar i would always much rather drink a bunch of okay beers with people that uh, i enjoy talking to Mm -hmm. shoot the shit um some places have the best beer in the world and you gotta wait i will never wait in line for a beer dude me neither me neither if i ever wait in line for a beer it will be because i've lost the will to live and I will wait in that line, get up to the end, and instead of getting, I will pull out a gun and blow my brains out in front of everybody <laughs> and just ruin everyone's day. Yeah. Just the, the last thought is the people who are going to enjoy this beer no longer can because it's a terrible memory associated with it. Just sploosh all over their fancy little beer. 
I hope you don't do that. I hope that you don't do that. That's I, I'm. I'm finding reasons not to, let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. It always reminds me of, like, I, I don't know if you like the comedian Ron White. I do. Yeah. So he talks about Garth Brooks tickets, right? He's like, I got a buddy who's like, hey, he's like, I camped out three days for Garth Brooks tickets. He's like, oh, yeah? Well, I wouldn't camp out for three days if I was camping. <laughs> right? So I, I'm the same. Like, and a lot of people are like, you know, that's, if that's your thing, great, right? Sure. Wait outside for, for those beers. For, but for me, I'll wait until three days later on Monday. I'll go in at lunch, and I'll have that same beer. Right. Right? Yeah. But um, so you do uh, beer reviews. You do short stories. You do sagas. You do all this stuff. So what don't you do, obviously, besides exercise? <laughs> well, that, well, we can have we can spend hours talking about the things I don't do. I mean, I don't sing. I, can, I mean, I can car- drunkenly karaoke a mean ice ice baby. Okay, crush that. I can see crush that. that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, I don't have sex with Scarlett Johansson, no matter how much I try. Real? Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I thought that by choice, but not by choice. Oh no, no, not by choice. No, it's right. well, but her choice. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a. I guess I focus on what I'm good at. Right, and yeah. I think that's I think that's the best you can do. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm I'm good at coming up with weird, dumb, crazy stories. Yeah, uh, but not so dumb that I think people are put off by them. Yeah, people are put off by me, obviously. As obviously, a person. Yeah, we yeah. saw that happen. Yeah, if you rewind, just, like, <laughs> I, lo- I love the like I, the beer scene has been great to me. Uh, craft beer owners, I have a lot of people who have. Who've, Put up with my terrible jokes and terrible sense of humor. Yeah. So, I mean, the, I get eye rolls, yeah. and I get a lot of like, oh, I don't know, I hang out with you, but you know, you're you're you're, you're a nice guy, blah yeah. blah. blah. But uh, every now and then, I get that one person who just doesn't get it, and I love that it happened literally while we were recording. It's <laughs> it so great, so, dude. It was like almost like it almost feels like I set that up because it was like that was not set up. I she agree. was okay. She's gone now, so we can talk about yeah. a little bit, a little bit. So we're in the middle of the podcast and she just turned around and looked at you she's like what are you doing you are disgusting that's exactly what happened yeah. and she's and gone now i'm not going to argue she's right right i'm, I'm self-aware enough right. so <laughs> exactly oh man you know what though if i know who she is i'm gonna tag her in this real Go quick yeah <laughs> so you're moving into food now right like that, that's something recent i'm trying to yeah, yeah, I, yeah. uh i read about beer read about wine not so much about spirits yet okay. uh, but I realized that I'm, food and beer obviously go well together but food and sadness go better uh, which I have a lot of yes. that yeah, I have yeah. a lot of that so mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, terrible food and a lot of sadness uh, they're a match made in heaven so I recently wrote a review of uh, Taco Bell's that chicken chicken chalupa thing the, the taco uh, that was a fried chicken shell you like, know the, what I'm the, like the actual tortilla was like actually a piece of chicken yeah, it's a piece of fried chicken. Yeah. Um, and I thought it would be hilarious to eat that thing and then pair it with an Arizona craft beer. Okay. You know, yeah. Support local businesses yeah. while eating that horrible food. And then I realized <laughs> when I bit into it, there was no meat inside. Oh. It's just, yeah, it's just like chicken, uh, lettuce, tomato, and some kind of weird avocado sauce. Yeah. And then I, re- I thought, wait, this is healthier than an actual chicken sandwich because there's less carbs because there's no bun. Right. Like, oh. what? Why? <laughs> would I, why would I eat this? Yeah. Like I don't hate myself. You after tricked eating me this. into this. Yes, you tricked me into. I, I'm eating this because I hate myself and I want to punish myself for being alive. Right now I'm just like, oh, that's just like a normal healthier chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste yeah. of time. So what I did is I took the uh, chalupa, opened it up, and I put other things in. So I bought some carne asada tacos. Okay. I put the meat in there, paired that oh, with an IPA. Nice. I took a Sonoran hot dog, a uh, hot dog wrapped in bacon with tomato and jalapeno sauce. The Sonoran hot dog is the answer to the, to the question, why do all Mexicans smell like diabetes? So I took the inside of that, put it in the chalupa, paired it with some Arizona beers, and that was a, that was a fantastic foodie, foodie and beer connoisseur review. Was it an accomplishment? Like, do you feel that it went better than what you expected? Yes and no. I mean, the writing went well. My desire to live went very badly afterwards. <laughs> right. I, uh, I definitely thought like it, that was a. I wouldn't say rock bottom because I've been rock bottom, and that shit turns out to be rock middle right. most of the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but it was definitely uh, a, a new avenue okay. to take my writing. So yeah. this, I would say, it's been two and a half years, but I'm still a very young blogger. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think there's a lot of places to go. I mean. 
look, I'm not doing this to try to get free shit from local breweries, local oh, businesses, yeah. my friends. Yeah, you know, yeah. I want to support them. I want them to make money. I want their, them to reach their bottom line. But man, Stone, give me your free shit. Right. New Belgium, <laughs> give me all the free shit you have. <laughs> just, just, just I, your t-shirt. I'm not going to wear the t-shirt. It's a principle of the matter. Give me t-shirts, right. pint glasses, coasters. Take me out there. It's a write-off for you, Stone. It's a write-off for you, New Belgium. Give me free shit. At so, what? How do they reach you to give you free shit? Uh, I'm on Instagram. P.O. Box 1574. No, I'm on. <laughs> um, you, can, you know you can direct message people on Instagram. Stone, yeah. slide into my DMs. Instagram, the class, at the Classy Alcoholic. Okay, on Facebook, nice. the Classy Alcoholic. The yeah. Classy Alcoholic at Gmail. Yeah. Anybody, give yeah. me free shit. Yeah. As long, yeah. as long as it doesn't hurt your bottom line. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice, man. So, um, perks. What, what perks have you seen, right? So, you... Uh, you Give me free shit because I want free shit too. Right. right? Like, I don't care what it is. Like, if it's a free break inspection, I'm good with that. <laughs> how, how do you translate, hey, I, I do a podcast about breweries, give me free break inspection? Right. Like, how does. <laughs> well, you already get it. So it, it's like a victory that you know you're going to get. Right? Like, hey, man, give me a free break inspection. They're like, yeah, we already do that. Shut up. Just give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Inspect my brakes for free. You're welcome. <laughs> right, right. So it's like buy one get one free at Burger King, like a chicken sandwich. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. It's not an advantage because it's just right. making it's cutting three years off your life, anyways. Right. <laughs> no, honestly, the Arizona craft beer scene has been so good to me. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I wonder why. Right. But they're they're great. You know, I some folks who come in and tell me, hey, we're having a new beer release. Come out here and, and you know, I'm not gonna say that they're giving me free shit left and right because mm-hmm. and, and I, I don't I'm, I don't like that anyway like I said uh, because they're you know they're, they're they're trying to make the bills yeah and you want to support them yeah and right? that's yeah. what I, that's what I like about a lot of, most of the time you're seeing the owner of the brewery behind the bar right you know, right now we're at Mesquite you, River and I can uh, see the guy right now he's oh, washing yeah. dishes Carl is like, busting his ass over here yeah. Carl say what's up <laughs> there <he> is, yeah. <laughs> right, but yeah. yeah I, so, but yeah. I've been hosted at Beer Fest. You know, I've, I've gotten inside info on you know, new beer releases. Uh, yeah. Friends who have who the, the friends who do stand in line for beers. Yeah, yeah. Will uh, share some with me. So that kind of thing. It's it's been great. Uh, yeah. I get recognized. So for people who have not seen any of my stuff online, uh, apart from just drinking craft beer and local wine. Uh, the classy part also comes in with the outfit. So right now yeah. I'm wearing a suit and a pocket square. Um, most of the times I'm running around in a necktie or you know, suit jacket. I so, am surprised you don't have the necktie on. Yeah, it's summer. Dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, it's, I'll, you're I'll lucky. Give... Well, for, first I'll say I look better than you, motherfucker. Like you, I have <laughs> sleeves on. Okay, like you. I'm sweating my pits off here. Yeah, really? like I have full pants. He's got, he's got <laughs> shorts right now. So I went into a thing where it was just like a button-down dress shirt, uh, yeah. slacks, and you look. Somebody was like, oh. You look good, man. Yeah. You look yeah good. Some guy yeah. was like, Oh, you don't wear a tie. You're not classy. I'm like, look at you. <laughs> you're a t-shirt piece of shit. <laughs> you're wearing a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. Exactly. You're Forty-seven years old. Yeah. But anyway, there was a couple of times when I've had uh, people tap me on the shoulder, just minding my own business at a brewery and he goes hey are you the classy alcoholic and I said yeah nice, recognize man. me just from the outfit the yeah. pocket square because I'm the only idiot who walk into a brewery in the <laughs> summer in Arizona with a suit jacket <laughs> right well that's how you and I connected somehow I can't remember it was either through Facebook or Instagram and we were going to meet up at uh, Strong Beer Fest Right. And you were like, you're like, I'll be the only asshole at that place with a full suit on. Yes. So and I was. You were. <laughs> I didn't make it, dude. I don't know if I told you that story. No, you didn't. But hey, Super this is the time. Sh- yeah. So I had a group of buddies going, right? Like, hey, let's go. You know, we're going to go. They're like, okay, cool. Like, they're not into craft beer. They like it, but not like I'm obsessed with it, right? So it's like 15 minutes before the Uber gets there. And I get on the website, and they're like, do you have to order tickets online? I'm like, no, we can just get there and get them, right? So I get online, sold out. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? So couldn't go. I had to go to Growler USA, which is cool, but it's no strong beer fast. And it's also a franchise, so. Right. You know, and, uh, no, no. We'll cut that out. We'll cut that yeah, out. It was not, yeah. Not that I'm shitting on franchises, but you but know, I know like, what you mean, though. Yeah, but uh, you, you, I guess you can feel the difference in a in a, in a big a big box brewery, a muck brewery. Yeah, uh, yeah, to, uh, if you will. I I agree. Uh, yeah, as opposed to just you know, like I said, a place that's owned by the guy who's behind the bar right now. So right, busting um, their ass, and it's yeah. and you feel that passion, like you feel like, and like you said, you're you you feel you're you know you're supporting those people, and like. You got Phoenix, right? I love the Phoenix craft beer scene. What got me started in craft beer was was Flagstaff, 
right? Mother Road. Mother Road was the one that like drew me in. Like Mother Road was my like dragon, right? You know, the the purple dragon. (laughs) You always chase it, right? So is that a thing? I've never heard. It's a heroin term. It's a heroin term. Oh, chasing the dragon. Okay, I do know that. Sorry, I don't know. My dad liked cocaine, so I I don't. That's (laughs) that's the only reference I. I grew up in northeastern Ohio, where heroin is uh, is pretty popular. So I always reference things back to heroin. I've never done heroin, but if I did, Mother Road would be the heroin of. Arizona. I don't. Mother Road, if you're listening, I'm sorry. But <laughs> Mother Road, you're not listening. You I, she, you listened to the beginning of this yeah. podcast and you turned this off. Yes. <laughs> Mother Road, you guys, I love y'all. Y'all are great. I know you turned this shit you off. You turned this shit off for liability. Purposes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to yeah. be associated with this. That's one thing that's very interesting is that I when I first started, I thought, man, nobody's going to want to be associated with a guy who calls himself the classy alcoholic and writes yeah. dick jokes. But People have liked it. They like yeah. it a lot. But uh, sorry to go back to Mother Road. Yeah, no, I I, lo- I love them as well. Uh, Lost Highway is probably one of my top uh, five Arizona beers. Yeah, the so. lo- me too. Yeah, honestly, that's my number one. Like that is my number one. And uh, there's a lot of good beers. A lot of good beers in Arizona. And one thing that was really impressed me is so when I went to Tucson uh, recently, um, I had to go of going to uh, Pueblo Vida. Right. And I didn't make it. I, I did a Tombstone episode, and then I was going to go to Pueblo Vida, but I ended up at Crooked Tooth. Okay. Love that place, man. <laughs> Love that. Ended up doing an episode with them. And the Tucson craft beer scene is awesome, man. I love those breweries, like the buildings, like Borderlands, um, Crooked Tooth. Like just... There's just a good there's, there's a good feeling about Tucson beers. Yeah, Borderlands is my favorite brewery in the entire state of Arizona. And number one, number one, really. Yeah, entire, nice, there's man. there's no other brewery that feels like it could only exist in the Southwest. Yeah, it just everything they do is great. Everybody who works there is awesome. Yeah, I, I love that place, and I shout out to Borderlands. I gave them the award for best craft uh, best microbrewery in Arizona up to that point in 2014. So which by which that uh, I that meant if they fuck up that award can be taken away. It can be stripped from them. <laughs> so I, I treated them like my father treated me with, with uh, motivating them through fear. Yeah, yeah. It's like, listen, if you ever screw this shit up, I will make a, it'll be a whole event. It'll be like a ribbon cutting ceremony in reverse. Right. I will right. tie a ribbon, take your award, and just destroy you online. I write positively about all the breweries I go to. Like I always, because the way I see it, there's no reason to shit on uh, a small business owner. Yeah. Uh, if there's a beer that I think is terrible, like yep. I just hate it and it's disgusting, they'll have like five more things on tap and I'm right. sure I like something. If you go into a brewery and you literally don't like a single thing they make, that's more you being an asshole than, you yes. know, the brewery is right. If you like beer, you're going to find something. <laughs> yeah. You know? If yeah. you're a Michelob drinker or a Bud Light drinker, you Get know. Get the fuck out. Or try a lager, that, <laughs> uh, craft lager. <laughs> right. yeah, if Who you, knew but that you, I would be the most extreme person in this conversation? If you insist <laughs> on having a Bud Light and get pissed, then get the fuck out. Right, but, right. Yeah, no, and then that's the thing about craft, uh, craft brewers is they'll always say, like, oh, no, we don't have Michelob, but we got a, we got a lager. We got an ale here that, you know. Right, or blonde. Like an easy blonde. blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, but yeah, so uh, when I write, I, you know, there's been a couple times when I've drank not so great beers yeah but I'm not going to call anybody out right it's fair to say that as the industry grows you maybe need somebody who is uh, an honest reviewer and yeah. can honestly say like well this, this beer needs some work this beer definitely is not up to par with the rest of this I, I have heard people around the uh, in the beer scene say that some new brewery is pouring stuff that's kind of homebrew style to still Finding their, finding their uh, specialty, but that the, the standard has grown so much higher that, that the bar is higher now, and that yeah. that place sucks because they're not really up to par. Okay. But like I said, it's the kind of thing where maybe that's a place that it's super cool, cool people there, and yeah, they serve okay beer. But I love to hang out there, and I'll yeah. always go there. Yeah. So I'll always find something positive about uh, a, a brewery, even if the beer isn't the best, because it. I've never had a bad experience. Mm-hmm. I've never had a thing where I think, Man, "Fuck you, I'm never coming back here." I've never, I've never said that about a business, especially <laughs> one that sells alcohol. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Nothing bad. Like the the bartender has this like if the bartender says the N word, 
and be like, well, who, who, are, who, who are you saying that to? Like, is it is somebody I hate? Is it a person I don't like? And yeah, even then, I'll give them the tip. But like, short of that, maybe if somebody did like was just dropping n bombs behind the bar, maybe that'll show up in the blog and say, don't go to this fucking place. But short of that, you might whatever. lose your life at this place, so don't go there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But other, yeah. but you know, that's none of the places in none of the craft breweries in Arizona. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And I like that you say that because that's that's kind of the approach I take to this show is um, I've got I've had people that say, dude, you got to critique the beers. What was your beer like? I'm like, it was great. Ooh, they couldn't have all been great. Like, dude, go and try them. Like, it's your it's your I could say that this like. You, all right. So I told you to order me a beer. You ordered me a sour. Right. I don't like sours. So when you told me I ordered you a sour, I was like, ah, oh, God damn it. Fucking God and I did it to be an asshole. But. <laughs> you knew it. You knew it. But I liked it. I liked it. Even if I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said anything because I so appreciate what these guys are doing. Right? And that's what it's all about. Like, no matter if you tell dick jokes, if, no matter if you have people at the bar who are pissed at you, who are like... What are you talking about? You are a disgusting, classy alcoholic, <laughs> right? No matter what it is, what behind what you're doing is positive. You're promoting the Arizona scene, right? Craft beer, Taco Bell, right? The local uh, <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> But seriously, well, though. Like, well, and the joke was that, you know, uh, everybody saw the commercial with the Taco Bell chicken thing. Well, and, it, you know, fast food places, which which I love. Oh, yeah. I love so much. Uh, <laughs> too, too much, too much. Yeah. But, you know, fast food places, they are, uh, that's what we eat when we're drunk. Mm-hmm. But why not take the hype of the weird new Taco Bell fucking thing? Yeah. And use that to piggyback promotion of local places on that. So, yeah. So that's that's what I always look for is what's the best way to promote my friends and beer family. Right. And right. if I can do that with uh, with jokes about dicks and butts, great. <laughs> if I that's can do that by eating disgusting, delicious Taco Bell food, Jack in the Box food. I did. I actually did a, a fast food and beer pairing a couple of years ago now that was... Not just Taco Bell. It was a bunch of places that tried the uh, Jack in the Box nacho tacos. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was um, the McGangbang sandwich, if you've heard of that. It's a, <laughs> it's a McDouble <laughs> with a McChicken inside of it, and I paired that with a Borderlands Noche Dulce van- Vanilla Porter. <laughs> it was actually not bad. It was really? a lot of, it was sp- the spiciness from the, from the sandwich like, brought out a lot of the coffee notes. Oh, it was, it was, I felt like garbage after that. But, uh, but it was hilarious, and people liked it. I think, I think that article uh, is kind of what sort of brought me into um got more people to to know who i was because they thought it was just the weirdest most hilarious most disgusting that was thing. the one like that was only kind of that was a turning out. point yeah, yeah, was, yeah i've had a lot of turning points but that was the first turning point i think yeah so, um but yeah i you know and, and thankfully i don't even sometimes i don't think it's actually real but if you just google classy alcoholic i'm like the top three entries on google yeah a lot of businesses work really hard to get themselves number one on google right yeah yeah and spend so much money on doing this and that but you just do it yeah like you I just do what you do right i and you it are, was passion anyways hey dude this has been awesome man classy yeah, i really appreciate it we should probably mention too we're in a competition of sorts oh yes I, yes can't forget this i feel like you're winning though well Okay, so the competition is uh, our our buddy Justin Cross, yeah, yeah, who is a beer and fitness enthusiast, home brewer uh, with plans to start his own brewery, yep, uh, opening up a, a, a some sort of store with like I protein think a curl and bar. fitness and shit. Yeah, I don't a know, curl yeah. bar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told the guy like if you have your brewery, you should just have like dumbbells and shit. Like, why not? <laughs> right, That'd yeah. be great. Um, oh, you want a you want a pilsner? Yeah, do fourteen curls. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got to earn that booze. <laughs> Hashtag earn your booze. Um, so he has a program called Brutrition. Yeah, which is brews and nutrition. Uh, he's, I've talked to him. He taught me how to eat eat a little better. I, yeah. I'm not even calling it a diet. It's a nutrition plan. Yeah, just eating small portions every three hours, making slightly better choices, eating more veggies, which is the thing I ever did. You know, it's just, it's just fucking grass. It's just grass. <laughs> the salad is just grass. It comes out of it's. They pick it up off the floor and they put it on a plate. Right. But I followed. I lost ten pounds in a month and a half. Nice, dude. Yeah. 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 So and and I'm, I have not stopped drinking. My my friends is. Well, first they make fun of me and they say like, "You yeah, dude, you call it a diet? You're still drinking beer." <laughs> and you know I'm usually drunk, so I just you know I just drop some expletives. You know. Yeah. 
C bombs, N bombs, whatever bombs. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Um, but no, I uh, and from what Justin told me, you're on the brutrician plan as well. I am. Yeah. Uh, I know that you have kids, you have a family, mm-hmm. and you so that that makes it a little difficult for you to work out and you know. But me, I, I have to fight against the, des- the genuine desire to die, pretty soon. <laughs> Like I don't, I'm like I'm not suicidal. I'm right, not right, gonna yeah. hurt myself. I'm not gonna put myself in danger. I'm actually a risk averse kind of guy. Yeah. But I really wish I could just go to sleep and then not wake up, <laughs> and but and not feel like my body shutting down. You right, know, right. Like, like you know, it's it's a, it's not a death wish because I'm not doing things that could get me killed. I just yeah. I just don't like being alive isn't worth it. I don't think so. <laughs> right. The only thing that makes it worth it is not being sober, and that's how what gets me through the day. Yeah. So I'm fighting against that. That's my handicap. Yeah. The 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 desire to say fuck it, I'm just gonna sit on the couch and just decay. Yeah. So I've you know I did a pit ship or two. It's it's fine. It's yeah. it's not good, but it's fine. Yeah. And my, my handicap is laziness. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Just well, I guess that's mine too. It's laziness at, at continuing to live life. Yeah. Too lazy to do that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you want this chicken with broccoli? Fuck no. I want this extra cheese pizza with fucking pepperoni. Right. Right? Yeah. And, and a pitcher of beer. And a pitcher of beer. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, two pizzas, a uh, pitcher of beer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Yeah. Make, so, make it quick, will you? <laughs> but So what's funny is we are in the... Like, we are in the laziest competition of all time. <laughs> yes. It's just two, just two fat dudes <laughs> just trying to like lose a couple pounds within like a six month right. period. And it's, you know what? Even if I win, it's I'm not gonna be happy about it. Just oh. be like, whatever. I guess I oh. beat you, you fat fuck. I'm a fat fuck. Whatever. Yeah. I lost ten pounds, but guess what? I'm still a fat piece of shit. Right. right. Well, I beat classy, but I'm still a C cup. <laughs> Uh, you know what happens? Hey, as long as at the end of this, we're both we both come out better dudes. That's what it's about, right? right? So yeah, we're, we're we'll be checking in maybe another podcast in the future where yep. we're both. I'm not gonna say we're both skinny, but you know, we're, that won't happen. Yeah, skinny for me is like 250. Yes, yeah, skinny for me is being able to see my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't happened in a few years. Back uh, in my early twenties, yeah, right. he and I were best buds. Yeah. Now uh, it's just like, oh, I remember that guy. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry about so that. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. You guys are disgusting. <laughs> Dude, thanks for, thanks for joining me, man. This thanks has been for having awesome, me, man. Even though this is a podcast, I just shook his hand and we didn't get a picture, but picture that. All right. But before actually, before we go, can I plug some stuff? Uh, absolutely, man. Yes. Instagram at the classy alcoholic. Facebook, at The Classy Alcoholic. My website, theclassyalcoholic.net, because I can't afford the .com. <laughs> uh, the Classy Alcoholic at Gmail, if you want to harass me over email. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Send and, dick pics. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, <laughs> dicks and butts. <laughs> dicks and butts. It's disgusting. <laughs> That's it. Well, one more thing. Okay, so the problem with me is I used to be scrawny in my early 20s. Like, okay. super scrawny. I was like 130 yeah. in college. And, you know, with food and booze and, like, a desire to not be alive, I got yeah. fatter. But it's just, like, my neck and my gut. But my arms stay scrawny. I look like a fucking brown Gumby. I'm a brown Gumby is what <laughs> Gumby. I am. A Brumby. Brumby. A there Brumby. you go. Yeah, yeah. And we'll end with hashtag Brumby. Hashtag vote for classy. Hashtag Brumby. Hashtag the classy alcoholic. Hashtag you're disgusting. Hey guys, thanks for listening to another show. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, make sure you go out there, um, check the show notes. I'll put the link in there for uh, the Classy Alcoholics uh, blog page. But uh, follow his stuff. Uh, really, really interesting guy. Great supporter of the Arizona um, local um, everything, pretty much. So um, if you guys are liking the show, as always, do me a favor, tell a friend, and um, go to uh, the the reviews. Give a review a rating if you're up to it. But um, uh, thank you guys for the support. It's really awesome. So um, let's get Arizona craft beer on the map. That's my goal and um, need your guys' help. So let's do this. Um, In the meantime, always remember, stay awesome.